favorites or not nah, uh, Texas and Tennessee is one of my favorite songs yeah that was an ex-girlfriend who was just man just dragging me through the dirt and um and yeah I wrote Texas and Tennessee that's one of the few songs most songs take forever to write you write the music and then you maybe have like two lines and it's just work trying to get all the rest of the words and not have them suck but that one if you're if you're having a night like that, uh, yeah, there's just nothing, there's nothing good that you could be doing. There's nothing, there's nothing that's gonna make you feel any better. And so, yeah, you write a song like Texas and Tennessee, and just kind of lay it out. And um, yeah, yeah, you don't have to tell me what it feels like to not be in love. Like, Man, you don't have to explain that. I know what it feels like to not be in love. We don't have to talk no more. I fucking understand. When I I came out on tour, and you had just written that song. Mm. And you were telling me about it, and you're like, you're like, man, I wrote a really good song. <laughs> I wrote it. I like, guess it's, it's good. Yeah. And now it's like, and you played it, and you weren't a hundred. You hadn't a hundred percent worked it all the way out. Oh yeah. And you played it through the most of it. Oh really? Just on the front of the tour bus. It was really. Like, I don't remember and doing it was, that. It was at the Orion show. And you all were, right. And you had, it was. Almost totally done, but you're like, um, this one line I might change or whatever. Right. But you were like, and you played it, and it and it's like, that's a good song. <laughs> that's a good song. Yeah, it's a well written song. But you were you were personally, instantly, you knew it was going to be a good song, and you were proud of it yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, which just doesn't always happen. Doesn't, nah, it's, it takes time for some of them to sink in. But yeah, but like, it's the same type of night as when I wrote nights like these, like. That was another girlfriend, and it was a bad night. And yeah, you stay up all night because you can't go to sleep. You can't do anything except write the songs. And then, yeah, for as much bullshit as they put you through, having a good song like Nights Like These or Texas and Tennessee, it's, maybe it's worth it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, on this tour, I've been opening with Texas and Tennessee every night. Just because I, I like it. I know it's a good song. I know it real well. So I know I'm not gonna forget it, <laughs> cause I do forget songs from time to time. So it's a safe bet, you know, to start with. Um, so yeah, and then that kind of, and it's not too slow, it's not too fast. It's just like it's a good, it's a good, good one to start with. Yeah, it's a good opener. Some wannabes. 
And it was reckless, it was understood It didn't matter cause it felt so good And I was to be here if you changed your mind But I could see them leaving in your eyes Don't wanna hear it cause I know it well I said it on before to someone else Baby, don't you talk no more That looks loud enough you don't have to tell me how it feels not to be in love You see that was my oldest game Darn it was my claim to fame I knew when I met you all you would need Some more than what I got Oh so baby please just stop these points in the song, I always wish I would have learned how to play a harmonica or something, you know. But I didn't. So you just get this. His arms of mine, this pain in my heart. The Tennessee night and the Texas dark. Well, it was Texas, it was Tennessee I kind of love a closer kin to grief Well, you were everything that I could want And California came and took it all Baby, don't you talk no more That looks loud enough now, You don't have to tell me how It feels not to be in love You see, that was my oldest game Darn, it was my claim to fame I knew it when I met you All that you would need is more than what I got Oh, so baby, please just stop Now to get it started, thank y'all very much Oh, hell yeah Man closing a lot of the shows with a song called The War, which I wrote a long time ago, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, um, but uh, it's based roughly on my granddad, who uh, was an infantryman in World War II. He was uh, in Europe from a few weeks after D-Day, and he was there until the end of the war, and uh, he only got injured once, but uh, but he he didn't go to a hospital and they just kept him there. And so yeah, he went from Omaha Beach to the Elba River, which is actually as far east as any U.S. troops got during the war. So he covered a lot of ground and was there for a long time. And um, and it, so and he was the only one in the family that ever drank or smoked. And he was a uh, he definitely he was definitely an alcoholic when he got home. But uh, he died when I was 12, and I never really got to, I only met him a few times. I didn't get to talk to him too much. And even if I, the few times I did meet him, I, I didn't know anything about World War II back then. So I didn't really know what he'd done. And then you start reading these books and talking to people and kind of putting yourself in his situation. And um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of amazing what, what he did when he was 20 years old, you know? And so the song is kind of um, as much of his story as I could put together. And then, you know, with me kind of putting myself in his shoes or trying to. Um, and so, so yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, I guess, can relate to that song. And we've gotten a whole lot of, um, you know, whether it's their fathers fought in Vietnam or whether it's their grandfathers were in World War II or whether it was them, you know, coming home from Iraq or Afghanistan. Um, yeah, I met a whole lot of service guys. A lot of guys from the military come to the Lucero shows. And luckily, they like the song. Because um, I've never been in combat, I've never been in the army. So, it'd be 
it'd be bad if you wrote a song about the army and war, and then the guys that had actually fought in wars were like, ah, that's bullshit. I would, yeah, I wouldn't have done a very good job. But the guys that do hear it, who have served, they, they're always really complimentary. And so, yeah, that's a, it's a huge compliment. Especially guys that listen to this stuff when they're overseas, that's huge too. Um, so yeah, that song's kind of become a, an important song in the, in the Lucero catalog. Um, and it makes a good one to end on. So yeah, I actually have two more that I want to do. Next time. I'll get you next time. I got two, and these are just for me. Uh, I'm requesting these, I guess. That's not one of them. This one's about my granddad. Yeah. 
the only song I've ever written the words to first. I actually wrote all those verses and, then, and had no music. Yeah, and that's the only song that's ever that's ever been written like that by me. It's gotta it's gotta be crazy or, or if it's crazy for you on stage when you're playing these shows and you see these people in the crowd that are like just they are so fucking in it. Yeah. And no, you know you just get it's huge. It's like uh yeah it it's a I mean, it's a huge compliment that they've, you know, that they've connected with this song and that they actually know the words and they're singing along, that, that it actually means something to them, you know, that they actually get it. That's, that's important to me. I'm excited. I'm here to see Ben Nichols. This is the first time I've ever, I've ever seen him solo. And I'm excited. I mean, this is, I've come all the way from Norwalk, Ohio to see Ben and Pretty, I'm pretty excited. I saw him um, a few times. I've, I've, I've seen him with in Toledo, Ohio. I, I've seen him in um, Open for Social D, Social Distortion with Lucero, and I was totally hooked. That was it. He, he had me hooked, line, and sinker. He was, he's, his voice, his presence, his personality is phenomenal. I love it. Um, I don't, I don't really... First time I listened to Lucero and found Ben Nichols, I was definitely, I think it was the internet. Yeah, it was the internet. It was just one of those things where like, I had a lot of bands that I like, kind of like, mentioned in the same area, so I just looked them up, and immediately it clicked with me. Um, and first time I'd ever met him was actually a Lucero show at Rooster. And by that point, I was a huge fan, and so I was to the point that I kind of started like a signature sleeve, and I'd asked him for a signature, and he had given it to me, I got a tattoo, and that kind of like made me stand out. Um, I also ran into him in the garage. That was one of my first times. <laughs> Getting an anchor, hold fast, Lucero theme to match up with my other Lucero tattoo. I haven't really seen it. I just told him anchor. He had a pre-existing Lucero tattoo. The heart with the banner said Lucero, and we just chucked an anchor up underneath it with the banner that says Hold Fast. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. No, we thought that too. We're like, that has to be that girl. Because it's like war. 
Well, Alex and I came down to see Ben Nichols perform, but then when we walked in, we saw that there was something going on that Oliver Peck was involved with, and I didn't really read the fine print, but we know Oliver um, because I sold him about 80% of my shovel head recently. Um, basically, he ended up buying everything except for my frame, motor, and transmission from my 76 FLH that I'm in the process of chopping right now. Um, I've never seen Ben Solo yet. I've seen him perform one other time, and I'm really looking forward to the show. Oh, favorite song. Hold on. If you give me a second, I can definitely conjure one up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, Hey Darling, you can Overton Park's my favorite record. This is my favorite track off that album. Okay, I'm just gonna play this. Hey, darling, do you gamble? Well, I'm running inside check. Not taking all I can. I've never looked back. Now happily, she's wrong with me for a while. Hell, now happily, she's wrong with me until this Texas sun falls to the sea. Fashion is skin fire, and this breath of kerosene. Now, darling, would you take a chance on me? Right now, it's not a safe bet. There's no map shows where I'm going. And I can't say just where I've been. But when you grow, by my side, oh, ain't no game that I can't win. Now have me, you shrunk with me for a while. I 
said, darling, would you take a chance on me? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, I got time for, is that water? Holy shit. Oh God, that's good. Never had this stuff before. Getting used to riding with other guys, it's definitely, it takes some getting used to. It didn't come naturally to me. I definitely don't like having to follow someone else because I like making my own decisions as to when to change lanes and when to slow down and when to speed up. I don't go slow all the time, nah. But I like picking when and when not to go fast. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, so riding motorcycles and touring, it's an awesome way to tour. It's definitely my favorite way to tour. Um, tour buses, they're fine, but they get, you put 10 or 12 people on there, and they get really claustrophobic really quick um, and really smelly. Um, and so having the freedom of having your bike with you is kind of awesome. Um, but definitely, I don't know, it's nice, uh, it definitely gives you a chance every day to kind of clear your head, um, and then by the time you get to the next town, yeah, you're ready to do it all over again, and then you know that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to have, you know, three or five hours on a bike, and you get to just kind of meditate, I don't know, that sounds kind of silly, but, but yeah, it gives you a chance to kind of clear your head. So, um, but it really I don't know. is the best way to see the country. Ah, to man. experience the road and the road trip. Yeah, definitely. There's, um, you can't beat I mean, It's not the same as being in a car. No, it's definitely, yeah, being on a tour bus, you don't see anything. Because um, you're mainly sleeping the whole time, and you're, the driver drives overnight. And yeah, you just wake up, you go to sleep, and you're parked in front of one bar. You wake up and you're parked in front of another bar, Time and travel. you missed yeah you missed the entire journey. Whereas this, again, it sounds cheesy, but it's it's most of it's about the journey, um, and yeah, and you get to pick, yeah, you get to pick what you see, and you get to pick how fast you go, and you can, if you want to, you can actually take your time and soak it all in. Um, and it's, sometimes it's scary as hell riding little windy roads through the rain. But, um, but then once you're done with it, you're like, fuck yeah, we just rode through crazy little windy roads in the rain and we're still alive. This is awesome. And it feels real good. Um, so yeah, there's definitely, it's more rewarding um, than driving in a van or riding on a tour bus. Um, you actually feel like you accomplish something, you know. And then you get to have a party every night. You play a show and have a bunch of people buy you whiskey drinks. So yeah, can't really beat it. It's a pretty good way of living. <laughs>